Hi, my name is Charlie Levinson, and I'm going to be talking about process. I noticed that the uh, spotlight sometimes hides the uh, photo credit, so I just want to you know all these images are used with permission of their creators. I'm also inspired by uh, an essay I'll tell you about later. I believe in the process uh, for creating media and developing media is very important, and especially to use the process and blame the process when something goes wrong, not our team members. I've had a little bit of experience with processes, both. Uh, well-articulated and formulated ones, and also seat-of-the-pants ones in the dot-com era. And uh, most recently at the credit union I was at, we had an interesting experience with process. So I'm going to give you a case study from there. Uh, first, I want to tell you that process, uh, our clients may expect 100% perfection, but we're not in uh, rocket science or brain surgery, so we usually don't deliver it as people. I had an ickier picture of brain surgery, but I chose that one <laughs> from Guerrilla Science. A little bit nicer. Anyway, I've had a fair amount of experience, and here's a case study we did uh, at our credit union. It's a letter, a regulatory letter we had to send out to about 2,000 people. Um, it was required, and it had to be printed and mailed. It had an error in it. It had a typographical error. It had a period before the word needs, and then another period. It's what I call the dot needs error. And uh, <clears throat> so this is how this happened. Uh, this letter began, strangely enough, at our insurance company that insured our accounts, and it started with a lawyer, as most bad jokes do. Um, the lawyer either stole it or cobbled it together, whatever they did. It ended up in a Microsoft Word document. They gave it to their project manager at this outside insurance company, who then sent it to uh, our internal project manager in our insurance division. Along the way, everybody looks at this letter, they give it the thumbs up, and they pass it on. They look at this mistake, they see it, or don't see it, they give it the thumbs up and they pass it on. Went to our internal our project manager, then it went to my boss and I in our department. We went back and forth with it a couple of times, so we saw it each time, said okay, and passed it back and forth. So it's been seen and uh, okayed a couple of times. Then our internal project manager got it again, sent it back out to the insurance company, the lawyer saw it again, gave it to their project manager it again, sent it back to our internal client, who then also added an associate in to take a look at it. So they saw it. Then it went to our internal counsel, so another lawyer saw it back to my department for one more look for my boss and I. Finally, it went out to the print mail vendor to be actually printed and mailed. They created a PDF of the final thing, sent it back, and that is when it was finally seen. There was a mistake. It got caught before it got sent. But if you're keeping track, at least 15 different people had their hands on this document, worked on the copy of this document, said they liked it, said they approved it, gave it the thumbs up, and passed it on, and only once did it get caught. There was something missing from our process. Not, not kittens. Kittens were missing, but they weren't as necessary. What was missing was proofreading or copy editing. It's a function that's missing from a lot of things these days. Newspapers, books, magazines, often missing. Um, we needed a proofreader, and we didn't have one. We had a lot of people who were involved in proofreading. This is what a proofreader does. These are the marks. You may not recognize them, but they should be there. Proofreaders are only responsible for typographical errors, spelling, grammar, and punctuation. They're not responsible for the theme or the message or the voice. That's not their problem. We didn't have one. We had a lot of people involved. We had two lawyers, a vice president of marketing, three project managers, a production associate, a communications manager, everybody working on this copy, but we didn't have an official person responsible for proofreading. And in the absence of proofreading or copy editing, since everybody was doing it, nobody was actually responsible for it. Our process didn't account for that. We got lucky, it got caught, it didn't get mailed out, one head rolled, that's how it goes, but um, the point is, we didn't have that, and our process needed that. When you build a process, you're defining the things you're going to do, how you're going to do them, who's responsible for them. That's what process is about. That's what process lets you do good work. Now, process can handle certain things. It can handle certain situations. A great, uh, my favorite war criminal actually defined these three things. Known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns. Known knowns are the things we know about, exactly, and they're easy. Known unknowns are things we know about, but we don't know all the details. They're kind of vague, we're going to have to deal with them. Unknown unknowns are the Murphys and the boogeymen that can pop up and kill you. The process handles the known knowns really well. Your team, with their improvisation and their adaptability, can handle the known unknowns. The unknown unknowns, your team may be able to handle them, may not, may kill you, may not. They get handled later in the post-mortem of the project afterwards when you go back and say, what happened? What went wrong? And this is the key. This is where you say, how did the process let this mistake happen? not who made this mistake. And by doing that, you're blaming the process and you're going to improve the process. You're going to make it better. You're not blaming your team. Your team will get better. You're clarifying the process after each production and you're distributing the responsibility within it. The key is, if you're expecting perfection and you have human beings involved, you're going to need checks, 
double checks, triple checks, and even then, things can go wrong, things can get messed up. That's about it. I'm very grateful to um, Charles Fishman, who wrote an essay about 16 years ago called They Write the Right Stuff about how NASA develops their software so perfectly. Thank you very much.